we're still refining those measurements and we can continue to. Yeah. At what point in history did astronomers realize that the farther up on a mountain they got, the better their observations would be because of less atmospheric interference? It's a remarkably modern idea. The first major observatory that I know of that was built on a mountaintop was the Lick Observatory in California. It was built around 1890. Until then, the largest telescope in the world had been built by a nobleman in the middle of Ireland. Now think about Ireland and what you have to have, you know, no clouds <laughs> to look at the sky. And, and one of the reasons you do, of course, is to get, well, James Lick made his money in San Francisco by selling pianos, and then he broke his leg just before the gold rush. So with his money, he bought everybody else's property when they were selling off to go look for gold. So he wound up richer than any of the gold rush people. <laughs> when he died, he wanted to build a pyramid to himself. And somebody says, no, 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 nobody can see the pyramid. But if build a telescope on a mountaintop that everybody can see. So he's actually buried in the pier of the telescope at the Lick Observatory. And you can see it from San Jose and everywhere around this. I think that's basically the my first story. Uh, you've devoted your life both to your religion and to your science. And we have people on both sides, uh, PhD physicists and theologians, who are saying either we're getting close to fundamentally knowing all that there is to know, or we could get there. And, and people of faith also, religious leaders in some corners, who are saying we've already been delivered all the knowledge there is to have, or Comment a little on knowability. Yeah, there's, there's two elements to knowing something. You've got to have something that's true, and you've got to be able to understand it. Science is human understanding. So a human being can understand something. But as I was trying to say today, it's always just an approximation of the truth. So science is understanding and will always be approaching truth without totally getting there. In religion, we've got the truths but we don't understand them. And all of our lives are spent trying to get a deeper understanding of the truth that, you know, like, like Mary does in the, in the Gospels, she ponders in her hearts. She doesn't come up with the answer and say, oh, 42, that must be it. <laughs> because in both cases, whether it's understanding or it's truth, knowledge is like an island. The more you know, the bigger your island. But the shoreline is the boundary between what you know and the vast ocean you don't know. And the bigger the island, the longer the shoreline. So the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. The more you understand, the more you realize you don't understand. So if you think you know everything, it's because your island is actually really small. <laughs> I probably look to the last two, so the person at the microphone and the person behind you. Sorry, this might be a really ridiculous question, but I was just wondering, what is the most beautiful constellation you've ever seen? And the second one was, if you have time after you're done, can I get a picture of you with my class and my physics teacher? Uh, I'll have the physics teacher listen. Yeah, I, it, you know, asking the most beautiful constellation is like asking somebody their favorite child. But, uh, <laughs> but I have to say, the most beautiful things I've seen in the sky are in the southern hemisphere. And uh, there's something just charming about the Southern Cross. Now, people in the Southern Hemisphere come up and they're amazed by the Big Dipper. So maybe it's one of those grass is always green. But yeah, afterwards, I'll be happy to have a picture. Thank you. <laughs> For the longest time, uh, scientists believed that uh, the cluster of galaxies that we have in the universe is the only one. But there's a recent theory called the multiverse, and it uh, has a lot to do with uh, the probability of life as a yeah. I understand it. Uh, what's your um, opinion of that? Opinion. Frankly, I have no idea. Both are possible. A multiverse or this being the only universe. By definition, anything outside this universe would give me no data inside this universe. And therefore, it is, by principle, unknowable. Until somebody comes along with a variant on the theory that I haven't heard yet. 
One thing I do know is that the universe is in some ways stranger than we know and maybe stranger than we can know, but it's amazing how much we do know and that even though we don't know how the universe is put together perfectly, all of life is making decisions based on inadequate data. Whether it's deciding to believe in God, or deciding to marry that person, or deciding to go to this college, or to move to that city, you have no idea how it's going to turn out, but you've got to make the decisions. And you hope you make the right ones, but you're free and willing to correct yourself when you come up with something that makes you realize there's more going on than I thought. And I'm perfectly happy with there being more going on than I thought, because a faith that's afraid of discovery has no faith. And likewise, a science that doesn't have room for the possibility of the supernatural is not very rational. Thank you, everybody, for coming.